How did these guys feel about that? <laughs> they just got knocked. <laughs> they all fell. They all need to reorganize. We're worlds apart. A flinch, like to me, is an earthquake for them. I'm currently a senior at the University of Arizona, studying neuroscience and cognitive science. I'm an undergraduate research assistant in a neurogenetics lab led by Dr. Conrad Zinsmeyer. I have a, a small lab here uh, in the department, which we call a fly lab, essentially, which uses Drosophila melanogaster as a model system to study really how brain cells communicate with each other. I mean, for me, it's like going to Mars or something like that. We have so little knowledge how the heck a brain is really processing information. So it's the question, I mean, who are we, where do we come from, and where do we go? I wrote this as an assignment for Dr. Susan Swanberg's science journalism class. I wasn't expecting it to go this far, but here we are. Model organisms are to thank for an outstanding amount of scientific discoveries, especially in medical findings. Within the past 100 years, all Nobel Prize winners in medicine, with the exception of one, used animals to model their work. One of the factors that I wanted to highlight are uh, the model organisms, the animals being sacrificed in order to progress human scientific research. This is a graveyard. Uh, <laughs> for lack of a better term. With the flies that we don't need, we'll dump in this fat right here. Thousands upon thousands of flies. And there's one of these you know, graveyards at every station. I can relate to fruit flies. Uh, I think we have a lot in common. One of the things that we have in common is we're both musicians. Within the steps of the male courting ritual, uh, a male will rub its wings together and produce a high frequency tone. And in the literature, this is called singing. That's a little piece of a lot of things that I've learned about fruit flies. I'd like to think we understand each other in that way. I'm not saying that I have this, you know, deep emotional connection to every fruit fly that I interact with because I, <laughs> I don't think I'd get anything done. It would be very, very difficult to understand so much of human biology and biology in general if we didn't have an organism to use as a model. Despite the fact that a human body looks dramatically different, and really dramatically different to that of a fly. The basic genes which very early on built this body plan are extremely similar. Flies have 14,000 genes. We can test all these 14,000 genes, whether they modify this human disease phenotype or not. What we do with genetics in flies, essentially to suppress the disease or, or enhance it, with that knowledge in mind, you can now look, okay, which of these proteins is the best drug target? I want people to look at you know, lab rats and mice and, and cats and say, thank you. Thank you for helping us. And flies, <laughs> especially flies. <laughs> <laughs>